Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss top. Check it, check it. Check it, it's a unique house. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad. Man, on. what's going on? Look here, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. Hey, man. Sometimes you just run into things and you don't know how it happens, man. This guy's here, man. Walk like Jordan is in the building, man. What's going on, man? What's good? Man, it's good to have you, bro. Say, man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, man, you do a lot. You've done a lot. <laughs> really, to be honest with you, I mean, you know, you see my setup, and I know you've been in the game. I mean, how we looking up in here? Man, it's official as a whistle. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's just like I saw on the internet. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, it's we so try- crazy because so, so many people seen our platform and be like, never knew we were in Texas, thought it was somewhere else. Yeah, they be was- saying everything. I tell you what, I done got hit up by a lot of, a lot of interviewers. A lot of bloggers, and I'm talking about just on this market. Mm-hmm. I've, I've not done one interview. Really? No, sir. Well, I'm glad you let us interview you, so mm-hmm. thank you very much, man. While like Jordan is in the building, man. Yes, oh, besides BZ TV. I did BZ TV. TV. That yeah. he, he seemed like a cool dude. I'd be seeing yeah. him with Terry Blue. Young, mm-hmm. young, Terry, yeah, young, yeah, real, yeah, yeah. Real humble guy. Yeah, yeah. How long ago did he do that? Man, he was in LA and he contacted me and was like, Walk like Jordan. I was like, what what you want to talk about? <laughs> he gave me the dialogue, and I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. Really? So so I want to ask about, you about three and a half months ago. Okay. Three and a half months ago. Yeah. How, what as far as managing and just understanding the business, kind of how did you end up getting into that role? Uh, in 2011, 2010, 2012, I pretty much established myself on the Fort Worth market as the biggest promoter. And Fort Worth. Okay. Started out with team parties. It crossed over to 21 and up. Then I transitioned over to Dallas with J Rock, the promoter. When Trilly and Prince Mick, yeah. Prince Rick, Mr. Hit That Ho was taking off. So being on the club scene, you know, you have artists come up to you all the time like, hey, yo, I need this play. They ain't going through the DJs. They're not going to the DJs. They coming to walk like Jordan because I'm. It's my dough. I'm paying everybody. It's my night scene. And when I saw the power I had to help artists that was independent, I'm like, let's do it. Man, got to feel good to, to, to help people like that because, um, you know, a lot of times guys be trying to find their way. And and they and they can't, you know what I mean? Or they can't do everything. That's, that's had, one of the big deals. I had two artists from my, my hood, my city, by the name of Cadillac and Pee Wee, they had a song, Work the Middle, Fat Nappy, Leave It In, Walk Like Jordan, we was all from the same neighborhood. Okay. And I ended up managing them because I was in position. So mm. that's that's where that come from. I left them out. I want to name their name. Man, but but I like I said, just the opportunity to be able to help others. Mm-hmm. That's what I look at in management. There's a lot of managers that have been on here, um, a lot of them. Um, Rainwater, Low Deasy, um, who else, babe? It's been a few, man. Supreme. Them two, the two that, yeah, yeah, Supreme. Uh, it's been a bunch of them, man. Like, like um, people who are uh, DJ Jew, Sergeant B, mm-hmm. a lot of them, man. And and it's you have to have a special type of connection with people in order for them to respect you. And 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 really, you can help them too because a lot of times, a lot of things have happened and transpired to where some have lost their lives. Some of the artists, you know, and and so you got to have this special. Uh, chemistry mm-hmm. to be able to maneuver these guys, right? Am I right, or am I just tripping? You, you got to have power with your artists. You got to have influence, a special influence, and that influence sometimes is bigger than their mamas. Yeah, yeah. And where does that come from? Because then, like, you have to carry yourself in a certain way. How do you get your artists to to respect you to that level where they put their career in your hands, put their lives in your hands? You know, because they have to trust you. Being able, to, being able to relate to them, you have to be able to relate to your artists. I don't care if you got six. One of them going to be your main party, the second one, the third one, but you, you got to relate to all of them. People ask all the time, how did you get solo? We ain't, we, we've been doing business for 10 years. You know what I mean? 
And I handle and deal with Solo a certain way because I understand him. And because he trusts me, you know what I'm saying, he relate to what I say. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just like being able to get him out here. I went through hell, but he was here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But you and 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 that's when we got here. What did I say? Light on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what you have to do. You have to know your artist. You know, even when they say, "I'm all right, I can't handle it," you can look at them in their eyes and know, "No, you mm -hmm. really can't." It's a bunch of arguments. <laughs> that's why you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna take this moment and I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. "I respect." And I applaud Rainwater. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't, uh, you know, we, we aren't fans. We aren't the biggest fans of each other. But I respect him because when you sit back and you look at the situation with Mo3, they had a long ass run. Yeah. Mo3 created an influence on the Dallas Fort Worth market. I don't think that will ever be seen again. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. From going a cappella in his kitchen to rapping, you know what I mean? His sound, like singing, like gangster, like he created something that I don't think we'll ever see again. That's no disrespect to nobody. That's just me being, that's my opinion. No, no, no. I and I respect it. Rainwater because I done dealt with Kenny B, Murder Gang PB, now Solo Lucci. Those artists have to respect you in order to listen to you in order to do what you tell them to do in order to be everywhere they need to be. We don't deal with artists that like these, these niggas move differently. Some managers would be scared uh -huh. in real life. No, mm -hmm. I get it. So big kudos. Cause I said some shit a while back on clubhouse you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and and I just want to correct it because as I sit back and I look, like, I respect rainwater. Wow. That, you know that's, what I mean? that's big. Because a lot of times you have to, people don't know what another person goes through because you're not in their shoes. Right. And um, sometimes it's unimaginable to be in somebody else's shoes as much as we can say, well, I can imagine it, but can you really, you know what I mean, see day by day of what they go through? Because when I think about, Yes, they have to respect you, but when you think about even your kids, your kids respect you, but sometimes you might be in a blowout argument as they get older, as a teenager, because these are grown people. Right. You know what I mean? Because, yes, you love them because you build a bond with the person, so you, you, you love them. You, you want them to be safe. You want them to be, you know, to succeed. But there's times when you see them messing up, and they don't want to hear it because you're actually acting like a father figure. Right. And most people don't like to be fathered. Right. You know what I, I mean? I get it. I, I, I agree with that 100%. You know, when I look at just some of the things that you have to encounter, even in parenting, mm -hmm. you have to step up. You know you failed in certain areas or you should have tightened up. Are those areas like that in management where you like, I, Man, I, I did this this way this time, but I'm tightening up right here on this. You know what I mean? I Scaling. Hate, I hate to say it, but management is meant like I, I coached at Cal State. Okay. On the NCAA level. Okay. Play games on ESPN. Okay. When we deal with players, it's about mentoring. Mm -hmm. It's about creating a narrative with them that keeps them going in the correct directions. And a lot of the players that we deal with come from fucked up homes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Fucked up backgrounds. Single parent households. It's so relatable to the music industry. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the artists... Came come from, the from same. fucked up situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they don't understand. They don't get what the fuck you're saying because they only see what they know. You know what I'm saying? 100. I'm dealing with Kenny B. If you know Kenny B, you know who his daddy is. Love right. Kenny B. No, yeah. You yeah. know yeah. where he come from. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you're dealing with Solo Lucci, Solo Lucci was shot. That's mm -hmm. right. And left for dead. Twice. That's not speaking against nobody, but he feel a certain way because of that. Mm -hmm. If you, if I've been dealing with Murder Gang P, PB, since he was a seventh grader, if I told you his background, his mama, it'll fuck you up. So all he know is that. Mm. He don't trust nobody. Man, dope, man. How yeah. do you get through to them, though? Staying down with them. When they fucked up and they going through and they piss you off, you can't tell them you, they pissing you off. You got to stay down. When you know it's shit you shouldn't be doing, 
you you got to do it because you understand them and you know what you're going to get. Because you know what you're going to get, you don't respond a certain mm-hmm. way. You respond the way that work in their favor. Wow. But how? where do you learn that from? Is that something that you, you can I learn? Went, because I think I, the coaching because too. Because I know because I went through it. You went through it. Yeah. So, people, don't, people don't know this about me. I played college ball. Mm-hmm. I played overseas. In sports, you learn discipline. That's right. right. You learn per- perseverance. You know what I'm saying? Patience. You learn, you learn tough times don't last always. Mm-hmm. Patience, all that good shit. Man. Were you raised by a single parent? My mama was an OG. I really? could tell you a lot of shit about my mama to fuck you up, but it was just me and her. That's and dope. my four other, three other sisters. So, so you are the, the the guy in the family. So I'm, the the oldest, man. I'm the oldest of 12 siblings. I met my daddy at 17 years old. Man. Well, you For the first man. time in my life. See, he telling you a story. Mm-hmm. And, and, and his story is dope because he telling you I've been through this stuff. And so now that I go through all of this, and not only did he go through it, but he was successful if he was playing ball all across. Right. Graduated stuff. with my and master's. Then, and graduate. mm-hmm. now, now, now you think of this and you see him and you see him manage, managing Solo Lucci. But there's a lot more to him than that. But why go into that business? If you did uh, graduate your master's, what was your major? My major was communications. Hey. Master's so, mass communication. So why did you end up in this career? <laughs> well, it's crazy because as a player, I was in, I was into throwing parties. Mm-hmm. So we would play a game. I got 20 and 10 or 20 and 15 or 30 and 15. And mm-hmm. this ain't just me talking. You can look this shit up. Just Google my first and last name. After that game, if I scored the right amount of points, my coach was letting me come back home. Saturdays, I was EXO, Club Mystique. Club Chrome, I'm leaving. He love party, and the university picked up on this shit, and they called me. You know what I'm saying? They said, "Hey, you got to take this shit down." Mm. That's why I had to put a, a stop to self made TV. Wow, because the NCAA was trying to violate violate me. Then the university, he got to get this down. Yeah, because you couldn't if, if can't you, do both. You can't do both. Yeah, but his heart was over there, so. I follow my heart. Mm -hmm. I follow my heart. And that's how I ended up in this business. Man, I'm glad you ended up in this business because you make, you make, you bring another level to this business. Right. And that's, that's what's dope. You know what I mean? How you bring another whole level to the business. You bring a, 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 a essence to it where it's educated and it's respected. You see what I'm saying? That's an educated, respected move that you're making when it comes down to I've been educated, I got my masters, and I'm managing Solo Lucci, and I went and did these things overseas. I played ball. I, I've been I'm, I've been everywhere, and now, and and that's why I know that we got something special. That's why I was asking Solo earlier. Um, there's a lane open, man. There's some here in Dallas where a person could put the right type of label together and you make the, you the millions. You Everybody key. keeps saying that. I We've know. heard Everybody that so many that. times. Everybody say that. Why do you think so? Well, because why do they say that? No, I'm asking him. He just said it. I'm gonna tell you why. Because right now, the voice that you have is becoming the biggest. Wow. In 2022, we created a new word. I biggest. heard this from Rick Ross years ago. Yeah. The biggest. Yeah. We the biggest with everything we do. Man. This show, this platform, it's becoming the biggest. Wow. Now you're going to get people from all, all across the world. So they want they want a cross market. They can come here and express who they are. Yeah. So with the power that you have, you can reach out and say, hey, youngster, come over here. I can introduce you to these people. I'll come over here. Let me get this paperwork done for you. Or I don't got to manage you. Let me get on a conference call with that label you're talking to. I understand the business. They're going to respect you and listen to you because of your platform. Wow. And that's dope. You know, that, that that's dope because I know you ain't lying because I've been talking to all these people. Mm-hmm. It's like I talk to everybody. I'm calling everybody. Oh, yeah, I do that. I can set that up with this. I already do that right now. Right. I'm not doing it on the level that. That I could be doing it on, but I definitely get what you're saying because you become a dot. I connect to everybody. You become a dot. It's true. I'm big on saying I'm the bridge from Fort Worth, not Dallas, from Fort Worth, Texas to California. Dope. I connect the dots. Mm, mm. And I and I get it. I get it, yeah. bro. Man, um, so 
What's what what what? Go ahead. I'll let you. Wanna, when she get braced up like that, I know she <laughs> want to ask something. She like, I gotta ask this. No, but um, how many artists do you have right now? Only. Uh, I have Solo Lucci. I have KC, who's a up and coming artist out of Fort Worth, Texas. I have Big A Welch out of Fort Worth, Texas, and I have Young Nut out of East Texas. Out of East out Texas. Of East Where at in East Texas? How come she got somebody out of East Texas? Fort Worth, Fort Worth, Fort, and then now East Texas? Well, Big you Nut know, out of East Texas. What part of East Young Texas? Nut. Young, Young Nut. Young Nut? Well, it's, you know, one thing about me, I'm consistent with people's approach. And his approach for six months was, will you manage me? Oh. Like, he came and found you. Like six. Oh, listen, I got 900 messages about management. You know what I'm saying? He was consistent for six months. Six months. Six months. Wow. And he's 19 years old. Left college football. Like, bro, I need you. I need your help. Is he talented? He talented as fuck. He just, his his background is fucked up. And I never knew it. Walk like Jordan. I I never knew shit about his background. God led me to him. Well, and when we sat down and talked and he told me, I was like, damn, like his mama was fighting pneumonia yesterday in, in the hospital. We had a show in Fort Worth, which is why we flew down here. He was supposed to be there. He couldn't. He FaceTimed me. His mama's fighting pneumonia because of some shit she going through and she been dealing with. But it's the reason she dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? Man, Walk Like Jordan is special. You know, special and, 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 and it's it's needed. You know what I'm saying? Very much. Yeah, it's needed. No, I, I'm on the real. There's a bunch of me out there, and they need to step out and claim they throne. There but. it is. And so uh, I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you go. So I see that you're here. You know, God put you in these people's life to be um, like a father figure to these people, to show them understanding and so forth. But everybody needs a support system. Who is your support system? Who helps you? That man upstairs. Hey. Uh, you can't beat that answer. I'm a prime. I'm a listen. I'm God friend. Let me say that first. I'm mm-hmm. God friend. God, That's, I'm God friend. I've been shot and pronounced dead on the scene. When? How long ago? July fifteenth. No, July was it July twelfth? July twelfth, thirteenth, or fifteenth. One of them days. Y'all know. I've been, what year? I've been drinking. Yeah. A what bit. year? 2015. 2015. What happened? Can you talk about it? I just say I got popped. Okay. In front of a club. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 44 shots was fired. Wow. How many did you you get? I got hit once. Bullet once. went through me. Hit me in okay. the back. Went through my stomach. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You still here? Still here. Man, that's dope, man. So, do you have family, children, anything like that? I don't have biological kids, but I got two boys that I took in when they was in the seventh grade, put them through middle school and high school. Both of them now are in college. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. very awesome, man. Uh, it's guys like you that I, I really love to, I love to interview you because you people can see that black men stand up, stand up and do things in a consistent way. They don't manner. acknowledge us. No, they, they don't. acknowledge the bad they, That's right. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I want to go back to, so when that happened to you, how did that change your life? Because a lot of times God put us through sometimes detrimental situations, especially when they see us going a certain way, to be able to change our lives. You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of like solo. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm not capping or nothing. I was laying there on that ground. I didn't even know I was hit. I had on an all-white shirt. I had just finished playing in the FedEx. I had just came back from playing overseas. The FedEx is a $5,000 tournament, so you're playing with dudes that play during the summer, everybody that come home that's hooping. I got hit, and they was like, Jordan, you hit. And I looked to the sky immediately, and I'm like, God, I know damn well. <laughs> now, straight like that, I swear to God, I came up in the church from pre-K, my gra- my grandmother and my grandfather, 87 years old today, my grandfather passed during COVID. They Sorry. raised me in the church. Before I moved in with them, my mama had me in the church. So I'm looking up to the sky, I'm like, God, I know damn well this ain't it. It's like, no, there's much more to be done. Those words were spoken to me. Man. And I accepted that. I got in the ambulance. They got me in the ambulance. They was like, we're losing them. I remember to this day, we're losing them. 
I pulled my phone out of my pocket. I don't know what the fuck they was talking about. Called my guy, son. One of the ones I told y'all. Hey, son, tell your mama I'm at the hospital. I just got shot. Called my right-hand man. Cedric Valentine. Bro, I'm at, bitch, you lying. Stop playing. He hung up the phone in my face. I called him back. Nigga, I just got shot. Meet me at JPS. Click. Call my mama. Mama, I just got shot. Ah! She went that why I call her last. <laughs> <laughs> you know how mamas are. I already knew she wasn't gonna be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. But the 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 uh the ambulance guy was like, "Do you realize you've been sh- a bully went through you?" I was like, "Yeah." Wow. And then I remember them closing my eyes. I went straight to OR. What is it? O R. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. But God had already told you that it, it, that wasn't over for you. Yeah. But, but that's that's great it? faith. Stop. That's what you got to understand. What you're expressing is, I have faith in what God just said to me, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's heavy, bro. Because most people doubt, but the, and, and fear. Mm-hmm. Fear is one of the things that strike you when you go through some, bro. But for you to just Stay calm like that and be able to say, you know what, I believe in if what God met, said to if me. If you met my granddaddy, you will understand. <laughs> that's dope, man. Boy, that's a blessing. What you just said is heavy, man. Because most people panic, and that's what kill them a lot of times. Yeah. yeah, that fear. That shock. Yeah, yeah. So that's dope, man. So let's let's talk about uh, the, the the brand. You say that, that you are... You are still like you was really blogging and doing the different things, and was, was there a podcast involved? It was just internet, it just interviewing, blogging, or what? So How were we doing it? In two thousand and fourteen, there was nothing else I could do in Dallas forward. When you talk about you, you can call these people. But Jay, you was dealing with say cheese too. No, okay. J Rock the promoter, the biggest. Okay, I think to me, J Rock the promoter is the biggest promoter to ever come through Dallas. Okay, Fort Worth. I had done parties with him and brought 300 people from Fort Worth to his clubs. Okay. So they was looking like, shit, this walk like Jordan dude is crazy. I was interning with 97 on the beat. I was doing all kind of shit. What year was that? <clears throat> that was 2011, 2012. As far as the party scene, I started Self Made TV 2014. Yeah. I was just thinking about over at Media, Sean. He he was over there. So, so but I think that was after you though. Who? Sean uh, Cotton. Ovid, no, Ovid Media. He's a he's a camera guy. He be with uh with Vita Loca. Vita Loca and all. Vita that. Loca hosted that everything was, I did in Dallas Forward. Okay. Everything. Her and Jay Cruz together. Jay Cruz. He was yeah. he been on those, here. Both of them. Those are my right hand. Like when I got shot and came back, Vita Loca and Jay Cruz, they put my shit together. Mm. I got both of them. I just talked to Jay Cruz because he just got hired on at K104. He, he, oh, that's good. He, he, he called he, he me. He told us that here, didn't he? He, he mm-hmm. called me and said, walk like Jordan. I'm on K104 now. I said, fuck you. You know, I like 97, <laughs> not the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, he told us. Because it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> but he definitely told us that night he was going to be on K104. But 104. there was nothing else I could do on this market. As far as 2,000 people in a club in one night, I did that. Mm. Real life, Arlington, Fort Worth, Dallas, there was nothing else I could do. So I said, you know what? I'm bringing all the celebrities. Why don't I interview them and create a TV show? Mm -hmm. I want to brand myself bigger than Dallas, Fort Worth. This is the route. Mm -hmm. I woke up a week later interviewing Paula Paula Helens from Bad Girls Club. Mm. They was putting, trying to put makeup on my face in the interview because I hired a real production team. They was like, oh, you got a spot right there. We need to cover it. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but I went with the flow. And then, you know, from that moment, I was like, I can really do this shit. Dope. Then I interviewed Mimi Faust, mm-hmm. Jocelyn Hernandez. Really? Uh, Trina. You know what I'm saying? Just different individuals. And I was like, this is my way out of Dallas, Fort Worth. I need to cross over. Because my brand in my mouth is big. Should be proud. Boom, I got shot. But you still look at you now, though. How did you, uh, you still came back, and you say you came back with uh, Jay Cruz and Vita Loca and them kind of helping you proud, they right? Did, they did a party for me when I bounced back. Like, oh. they did my first party after being shot. Man. Yeah. So you knew, I, and, and you stayed focused, and you still continued to grow that brand. All my people was like, fuck that party, don't do that party, bitch, you're not ready. <laughs> but you should have jumped back into the podcasting, though. 
Or the I, interview. I, I, Interviewing. I, you know, I took a I took a teaching job at Polytechnic High School in Fort Worth, Texas. I taught for three years, and I coached basketball, track, football. The entire time I was doing it, and then I got a call from my bo- from my college coach that I played for at for Cal State. Wow. And I took that job, and that's what got me to California in mm. 2018. Dope. You like California better than Texas? What? I ain't never moving back here. Hey. Why? What is it about that? Opportunity. That's it? There's an opportunity on every corner. Mm. People want to help you. People want to teach you how to grow. People want to teach you how to be better. The only thing about moving to the West Coast is you need a little money because the, the, the cost of living. Yeah. But if you don't go out there and get caught up into Hollywood and try to live like them people that you not like, you'll be all right. I can't stand the traffic. The traffic is like Dallas mm-hmm. at 5 o'clock. Mm-mm. It's a little worse, but it's the same <laughs> thing. You're sitting still. Yeah. So, man, um, so top three artists of all time. Get ever alive. I any genre. Because I'm going to do a whole any segment genre. on it. Number one. Oh, shit. My era can be old it, school. It, it don't new matter school, however any you era. want how, any era, whatever your top three uh, entertainers slash. It can be country music. Can be anything. Number one, I'm going with Michael Jackson. Number one. Number two. Y'all gonna hate me for this. Ooh, I'm going with Betty Wright. I love you for that, <laughs> bro. Stop playing, man. Where you at with it? That boy say, bit. Don't I listen to a lot? Do I listen to a lot? That's what I listen. That's me, there. And the only reason I'm man, I love Betty Wright, man. I'm going Betty Wright is because her shit hit different. It. My mom was playing that shit. Like when I come from Cumber Elementary, walk down the street. When you turn the corner, my mom was blasting that shit, (laughs) and she had Velveeta shells, fried chicken, green beans, and some biscuits in the oven. Man. And you walk in the house and you'll be like, I'm so goddamn tired of hearing this music. <laughs> Betty Wright. But then when you heard the lyrics and my mom was swinging to that shit, I was like, Betty Wright, all right. Just <laughs> keep still. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm nervous. Be I'm like, like, tonight is That's tonight. it. That's yeah. it, boy. <laughs> Number three. Uh, number three. I said Michael Jackson, Betty Wright. Betty Wright, number three. Can you give me a, a help me? Uh, give me give me six artists to choose from. Mm-mm, this is your time. You know every artist. I do, but this come hard. on now. Number three, Beanie Man. Hey, <laughs> Bob Marley. <laughs> Stop. Uh-huh. You, <laughs> I know I'm not. Keep playing. going. No, them good names. Keep going. I need help. Y'all want a third artist? R. Kelly. Nope. <laughs> R. Kelly is one of the greatest of all time, but it ain't number three. Who is it? I know. I'm just playing with all of those. Um, fuck. I'd say something real, you know. Uh, it, Come it, on, nah. It Aretha be. Franklin, Luther Vandross. I was gonna say Luther. You would have said Isaac, bro- Isaac brother. Isaac brothers. Them boys there. go hard. Oh, that's hard. A lot of people say Tupac with all of that. Tupac. 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 You gotta give it, it to him. <laughs> and I'm glad you said that too. I, I, I'm gonna ask you something. Uh, First off, fuck your bitch. And the click you claim <laughs> West Side when we <laughs> ride it. We quick with game. You claim to be a player, but, but I, I fucked your wife. We yeah. bust on bad boys. Niggas, niggas fuck for life. life. Hey, so yeah. check it. I gotta ask you a question, man. Pimp C, man. I don't know that, how that even took me so long. <laughs> that's why I was asking for help. But check it, man. I need to. Uh, uh, know about Pimp C, man, and uh, what he meant to the music when you listened to that mogul. Like it'll never be recreated again. What was what stuck out about Pimp C for you? The lyrics, the honesty, the generic. Like we will never see Pimp C again. That shit will stick with me thirty years from now. Your kids won't even know who Pimp C was. When they come into the world, they're gonna hear about Pimp C. It's kind of like Michael Jackson. Y'all was talking about Michael Jackson and Chris Brown. You know why that's no comparison? Because generation after generation after generation will forever hear about Candyland and Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. It's not even fucking close. Anybody comparing Chris Brown to Michael Jackson is fucking delusional. Whoa. That's my opinion. Now, do I think Chris Brown is a goat? Goat? Yes. And I, I know why Solo was saying that. Because he, he know Chris. No, because he, he experienced him. No, 
Fuck the relationship. He experienced Chris Brown in real life. So I respect that. But Michael Jackson, when you go look at the numbers. No no way. I seen a bitch nut watching him. <laughs> go look on YouTube. It'll never be seen again. Wow. I definitely loved it, man. So what, is there anything we missed? We got to say that. Uh, Anything you want to get off your chest? Any new ventures coming up? Because I know that, you know, I, we know what you do. Everybody but. watching me right now. Yes, I am the biggest MC in the LA nightlife. Hey. I officially crossed over. Hey. Okay. My advice to anybody out there is don't be afraid to experience and explore new opportunities. opportunities. Hey, get outside of your market. Dallas Fort Worth is one thing, but the world is another. That's dope. I went to LA. I'm now the biggest MC. I host right now the hottest strip club in all of fucking LA. What's it called? Slash Hollywood. Cheetahs. Hey. How long did it take you Started to get out to where you six months? Oh, okay. <sighs> wow. That's dope, man. Favor. It's favor. It's favor. So man, thank you, man, for and coming on the, the show, right man. People. Yeah. Yeah, knowing the right people. I ain't know nobody. I just got on the mic. Well, you know what? Y'all right. That's a lie. <laughs> a DJ saw me and was like, hey, bruh, ain't you definition walk like Jordan? I was like, yeah. He was like, you got to grace the mic for three seconds. I got on that bitch. Boom. I got the house job. There it yeah, is. And when you say definition, that's all them definition DJs, right? So uh, Definition D DJ uh, Dallas drop. The inventor from Dallas. Definition DJ Jack, yeah. Jack Frost? Jack Frost. Uh -huh. That's my I guy. Hear about all He'd of be them. on the show. Legendary. Mm -hmm. Definition DJ E Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so many. I'm, it is. I've man. Been How do people get into being a definition DJ? Don't be scared. Tell them you want a DJ. And, and be and be consistent. I told them I want the MC. They came to my club and they initiated me. Hey. I had that motherfucker rocking. Already, <laughs> man. Hey, man. Right. We definitely love you, brother. We, and anytime you you're too. in the city, make sure you stop doing holler at us. Got you. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. <laughs>